Hello, I'm Tana, your MLC tutor. Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about Hattendorf's theorem, which is very daunting. I have it here. I'm going to show you exactly how they came up with that and try to um, give you some idea briefly of when you might want to use it. In this video, I'm just going to go through and derive the formula and explain where it comes from, and then I'll do another video with an example. So, this theorem is basically just giving us a recursive relationship for the variance of your lost random variable. Clearly not very intuitive. Um, and I did um, see in my study manual, it says that questions on this are rare, but it's sort of useful um, to see how they came up with it. And it's a good review of reserves too. And the last random variable, obviously. So let's figure out how they came up with this. Okay, so we're gonna start with this recursive formula, which is intuitive and a bit easier to understand. So the loss random variable at time k, so the true value of all the losses that you're going to pay out um, in the future if you're standing at time k, plus the reserves at time k is equal to your incurred losses, which um, at k, which really just means in this time period, what losses will you have to recognize? It's going to be the true losses that you'll have to pay out, plus any reserves that you need to have on hand. So this is like your losses plus your reserves, but just for this time period. So all the losses and reserves is the losses and reserves, true losses and reserves, just for this period, plus your losses then, if you're standing at k plus 1, all your future losses, plus the reserves at k plus 1. Okay, and those two will need to get discounted back to k. I'm going to go ahead and take the variance of this whole thing. Okay, now your true loss random variable is independent of your reserves. So the variance of the sum is going to be the sum of the variances. So the variance of this side will be the variance of your loss random variable at k plus the variance of your reserves at k. That's going to be equal to the variance of those incurred losses at k which again is for the period from k to k plus 1, plus the variance of v times the uh, v times, I'm going to distribute the v and then split it up. So v times the loss, true loss random variable at k plus 1, plus the variance of v times your reserves at k plus 1. Okay, now your reserves at any given time is just a number. It's not a random variable. You can calculate how much reserves you're going to decide to have on hand. Um, so the variance of a number is 0. So that's gone, and this one is gone. Okay, so then we're left with the variance of the loss random variable at k is equal to the variance of our incurred losses at k plus the variance of our losses at k plus 1 discounted back one period. I'm going to pull out that v and square it since that's just a constant. Okay, now I'm going to condition everything on um, the probability that you live to k um, because none of these are really worth anything if you haven't even reached the point k. So 
we have that the variance of the loss random variable at k, given that the curtate future lifetime is greater than or equal to k, equals the variance of your incurred losses, given that you live to k, plus v squared times the variance of your losses at k plus 1, given that you reach the point of k. Okay, so this is great. The problem, um, the problem with this last term, though, is that we're looking at the loss random variable at k plus 1, but we've only conditioned this so that you live to k. Okay, so that's not very helpful because what if you die at k? And then, you know, we can't really talk about this loss random variable at k plus 1 because you never made it to that point. So the loss random variable at k plus 1, given that the curtate future lifetime is greater than or equal to k, we can make this given that the curtate future lifetime is greater than or equal to k plus 1, which is what we want. But that's only the case if you survive that year between k and k plus 1. So what we need to do is that this part will become v squared times if you live you have an x rolled um, here we're saying oh, it should be k here we're saying that they live given that they live to k we want given that they live to x plus k plus 1 so if they live this year, then we have the variance of k plus 1L, the loss random variable of k plus 1. I don't even know if you can see this anymore. <laughs> but it's given that the curtate future lifetime is greater than or equal to k plus 1 now. So that's the end of this first part. We have the variance of the loss random variable at k, if you make it to k, is the variance of the incurred losses at k, if you make it to k, plus v squared times the probability of living between x plus k and x plus k plus 1, times the variance of the loss random variable at k plus 1, if you make it to k plus 1. Now I'm going to show you how to simplify this portion, the variance of the incurred losses, and then we will be done. Okay, so now we just need to find an expression for our variance of the incurred losses at k, given that you make it to k. So we are going to use the Bernoulli shortcut, which I explained in another video, so you might want to go check that out if you're not familiar with it. Um, we want the variance of something that can only take on two different values. These incurred losses, so we're just looking at the period between x plus k and x plus k plus 1. So there are only two possibilities in that period. You can either live or you can die. So since we're looking at curtate probabilities. So if you die, the incurred losses will be the benefit that you pay out less whatever reserves you already have on hand, this is kind of offset that, discounted back one period. If you live, your incurred losses are going to be whatever new reserves you determine you need to have on hand, less the reserves that you already have on hand at k, and then that will be discounted back one period. Since this can either take on 0 or 1, it's a Bernoulli random variable, and we have a shortcut for calculating that variance. First of all, this expression simplifies down to the variance of, uh, let's see, v times x times the benefit at k plus 1 minus uh, the reserves at k plus 1. 
Okay, I know that V and the difference between the benefit and the reserves at K plus 1 are both just constants, so I'm going to pull them out and square them. We have V squared times the difference between the benefit and the reserves at K plus 1 squared times the variance of X, which is our Bernoulli random variable that takes on a value of either 0 or 1. We know the variance of a Bernoulli random variable is the probability of success times the probability of failure. Okay, and maybe I didn't explain this very clearly before, but we have associated X with um, what the incurred losses will be if you die. So the probability of success will be um, the probability of dying in that period, which is Q X plus K. And then the probability of failure will be P X plus K. So this is our expression for the variance of the incurred losses. Okay, and if you plug in that expression for incurred losses that we just came up with, um, you end up with Heindorf's theorem. So I hope that that made sense to you. I will do a video with an example of how you might be able to use this in a problem on the exam. Happy studying!